please, everybody, give a Warren Bridges last laugh welcome to Mr. James Hohenshey. Keep it going for your host, John Henry, and everybody you've seen tonight. And thank you, folks, for coming out. We appreciate it. Um, I got a new job this year. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Give it up for me. Uh, I had to, I had to get a new job because uh, I had a crisis of faith in my old one. I was, uh, yeah, it was bad. Um, I was watching a video while I was on my lunch break one day. It was a, a BBC documentary about a honey badger named Stoffel. Okay. Uh, if you guys don't know what a honey badger is, they're a small mammal that's indigenous to northern Africa. They're about the size of a very fat house cat, and they are insane. <laughs> they are bat shit crazy. Uh, they are small and angry and hostile. They are the Joe Pesci of Africa, <laughs> is what a honey badger is, okay? Just like a little furry Joe Pesci from Goodfellas is what these things are. And they had a problem with this honey badger, Stoffel. They had to build Stoffel a new cage. They had to build Stoffel a new cage because Stoffel broke out of his old one and mauled a lion. Right. Somebody might ask, well, how big was the lion? It was lion size. Small lions are a problem, okay? <laughs> Regular-sized ones will kill you, and, and Stoffel mauled a lion. If you're having trouble with the physics of this thing, imagine that you have a son that's in the first grade, and the school calls you up because he's in trouble, because at recess, he beat up the rock. <laughs> and when you go to pick your son up from school, the rock is sitting next to the principal's office with one of his massive ass cheeks in each one of those little chairs that are there with an ice bag over his eye just go <laughs> <laughs> and then your first grader standing in the corner drinking a juice box looking like a badass like he's Tyler Durden from Fight Club he's like <laughs> you would realize that you would have to lock that little bastard up too so they had to lock up Stoffel now I want you to think about the insanity of Stoffel for a second, because Stoffel mauled a lion. So not only did Stoffel have to break out of his cage to maul the lion, he had to break into the lion's cage to do it. They don't just let the lion wander around the zoo. It's not like a, a peacock or something like that. They lock them up pretty good and tight. So Stoffel had to be walking by the lion's cages Excuse me, did you say something to me? Did you say something to me? Did you, you think you're safe in there, tough guy? You think you're safe in that cage? You think I won't come in there and kick your ass? Is that what you think? I'll climb over this cage, I'll climb out of the cage, I'll come in there, I'll tear your balls off, and I'll shove them right up your ass, you big mug-looking son of a bitch, you. So this was a problem. <laughs> so they built Stoffel a new cage. Tall, chain link cage. They put a latch on it. Stoffel climbs up the cage, reaches through, undoes the latch, gets out again. So now they put Stoffel back in his cage. But this time, they put two latches on the cage and they wrap a wire around it, okay? They also give Stoffel a female honey badger that he can hang out with. They're figuring he'll just stay in there and bang the honey badger all day and he won't want to get out. <laughs> or, if a female honey badger is anything like a female human, uh, every time he tries to leave the cage, she'll nag his ass and bitch at him until she <laughs> eventually breaks his spirit and he just doesn't want to leave the cage anyways. He just wants to sit next to his rock and die. Uh, but that didn't work with Stoffel. 
Stoffel got this bitch in check pretty fast. He was like, hey, honey, listen to me. You knew what this was when they put you in here, all right? Okay? I'm Stoffel. I got to be me. I got things to do, okay? So you can help me get out of this cage because there's a hippopotamus that's been running his mouth and I'm going to kick his big fat ass. So you'll get the bottom lock, I'll get the top one, and then after I'm done handling my business, we'll party by the monkey cages. So that's what happens. Stoffel teaches the other honey badger to let him get out. So now they have to build Stoffel his own little Alcatraz in, in the zoo, right? It's four concrete walls, smooth, no locks, no latches, no nothing. They just toss Stoffel's ass in there and leave him to rot. So Stoffel climbs up one of the trees in his cage, and he climbs out to the end of one of the branches, and he uses his own body weight to weigh the branch down over the concrete wall, drops down, he is fucking gone. They cut Stoffel's tree down. Stoffel digs up all of the rocks in his little Alcatraz and pushes them over into the corner. He's made a ladder now. Stoffel climbs up his rock ladder, he's gone. They take all of Stoffel's rocks away from him. Stoffel digs up mud, packs it into wads, and just lets it dry. Stoffel's made his own rocks, ladies and gentlemen. He then pushes his handmade mud rocks into the corner, makes another ladder, and he's gone. He broke out of his cage one night and broke into the zookeeper's house. What kind of a boss move is that? The zookeeper steps out in the hall and there's Stoffel. He's just like, hey, tough guy. You know where I live. But now you know I know where you live. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go over to the other side of the zoo, find that gorilla, and kick his monkey ass. Good night. The zookeepers would leave rakes in there. He would use them as ladders. They would leave hoes, other gardening tools over. He would pole vault with them. Whatever they did to Stoffel, he would get out of his cage. And that's when I had my crisis at work because as I was watching this documentary, it dawned on me that Stoffel's smarter than half of the people I work with. <laughs> this little goddamn rodent has better problem solving skills than some of the people who managed me. <laughs> and I had to quit. I'll tell you this before I go, I, did, I worked at Home Depot with the job that I left. Um, yeah, don't applaud that. Applaud me for leaving, don't applaud Home Depot. It's, uh, it's hell on earth. Something interesting about Home Depot, and you can do this if you live around a few of them. It is not uncommon for you to walk into a Home Depot and meet one of the managers of the, home, managers of the Home Depot and have that person tell you, you know what, when I started with Home Depot, I worked out on the lot, which is the worst job that you can have at Home Depot. And the manager will tell you, I worked out on the lot and I worked my way up to manager. <laughs> which shows you the opportunity that you have when you work at a Home Depot. Uh, but it also shows you that being a manager of a Home Depot is probably not all that hard. <laughs> if the stupidest person that you work with could be trained to do your job, your job's not hard. <laughs> it's just, if you have a hard job, there is some sort of an intellectual ceiling that people have to hit before they get to what you do. That's just the way that it works. It doesn't work like that at NASA. You're not going to walk into mission control and some asshole be sitting in there like, hey, I used to clean the toilets, but now I design the rocket ships. That doesn't happen. That dude could clean the office or mission control, but he's not running any of the buttons, like the flashing things. He just doesn't know what that means. My favorite Home Depot story, there's a guy named Donnie Sanchez. Donnie basically runs 
the southwestern United States. Donnie is missing these two parts of this finger because when Donnie was an hourly associate at Home Depot, he cut his finger off with a saw. And he now runs the southwestern United States. That doesn't happen at McDonald's. If you can't cook the fries right, they don't move you to the grill. You have to go back down to the mop. That, or you gotta go work at Burger King. They don't move you up. I'm like, you know where you need to be? The office, come on. You good with numbers? I didn't think so. You'll be fine. So yeah, Donnie cuts his goddamn finger off and everybody gets together like, hey, Donnie cut his finger off on the saw. What, would, what should we put him in charge of now? Mm, I don't know, Arizona? <laughs> I don't know, he cut two knuckles off. Oh, son of a bitch, I didn't think about that. Let's give him New Mexico too. Hey, you guys have been great. Thank you so much for coming out. My name's James Hollinshaw, guys. Good night. Thank you.